High Smiles Red Songbird from New York. Michelle Birdsong, uh, Eve, Mother of the Earth. Before I get into exposing suspected buttfuckers, I want to tell you that this is Tommy Robinson, who was Abraham, father of religion, and they are persecuting him in Britain for trying to save Britain. Uh, the British are doing that to him. And so I think that we should all and tell Queen Elizabeth II uh, to contact Parliament and tell them to let Tommy Robinson, Abraham, out of jail because they're going to beat him up or kill him or something the way they did. They beat him up the last time, the Muslims, the dinosaurs, uh, the last time he was in jail. They ganged up on him. They're ganging up on him. Here, see, he's got his hand, that guy's throat. He's a five foot seven giant. He's fighting the invasion of the dinosaurs almost single handedly. Daniel Hanlon, a member of parliament, is also, I don't know if he's still a member of parliament. He was a member of parliament for 11 years. He's also fighting the fight against the rapists and the um, dinosaur invaders. So, and this, um, is um his son Paul um, Watson um his name escapes me how is that happening Paul Joseph Watson was um Abraham and Sarah's gift from God uh, Sarah I was Sarah Eve was Sarah. Okay, and he's on info wars. He's also a truth teller, a very, very brave man. And he, he takes care of his parents. He's good to his parents. So that warms my heart. Okay, so like I said, uh, try to get Tommy Robinson out of jail because he's a good man, a man fighting uh, a good cause. And if Britain goes, I don't know how much hope we can hold down here in America. Okay, so now let me get to um, what I wanted to say. Is that all I wanted to point out? Okay, this is this is Adam. Okay, the white boy. This is Adam when he was black. Jesse Belvin, a soul singer. That's Stevie Wonder and Edwin Birdsong's favorite singer. And he was singing to Eve. And I felt his... And I felt his love. It was great. He got me through growing up. <laughs> I was a kid being, you know, unloved for the most part and unacceptable to people also. This is Sam Cooke. This is when Adam was Sam Cooke. Okay. Win your love for me. Uh, 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 you know, and um, I'm thinking about Saturday night. Okay, but the words aren't coming to me. Okay, this is, um, how shall I say, um, the snake from the Garden of Eden. And he's, he's trying to psych us out to believe that he's normal. Okay, standing up there pretending he's normal, like we're stupid. What did Herman Cain say? He wrote a book, they think we're stupid. The Luciferians and the Satanists. They were stupid, like we don't see that he can't see, and he's full of shit, he's bullshit. Okay, so I have, um, we're gonna continue here I'm talking about him. Um, uh, I'll show you another picture of him. This is a picture of him. There he is, there, with Edwin Birds on, a couple of white girls. Okay, so when I was in Tennessee, um, I mean, I was raised in Tennessee, but I left and went to Chicago, then I went to Texas Asturias College, and then I went to New York, where I stayed most of my life, and where my energy fits. Uh, so when I went back to Tennessee, I had written a song called Looking for Love, and I think my sister introduced me to the choir director, Charles, I don't remember his last name. You know, but he was a homosexual, he was a friend. I mean, I thought he was my friend. And and so I told him about Edwin and and uh, Steve and Stevie Wonder and how uh, we put out this album, it was great. And, and we thought Stevie Wonder was gonna um, do, so, do something to publicize it. 
uh, especially since I had started Stevie Wonder on his career, and which I explained in other videos, and Edwin on his career. But what they did was they took, uh, they let me help them make it, and then they left me to starve to death. They left me with nothing. And of course, I didn't guess this because as a woman, as a sympathetic, uh, you know, woman, I just, I made excuses. I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe they did this to me. And I didn't even know how bad it was, you know, even though I reacted. So, so anyway, Charles said to me, they're fucking. I said, what are you talking about fucking? Steve and Edwin are fucking. I said, that's impossible. I did the test with Edwin whether he was a homosexual or not. And he passed the test as a heterosexual. You know where you put the finger behind the testicles and massage it a little. If it's a, homose if it's a heterosexual, they go crazy. If it's a homosexual, they do nothing. And, and I did that with him and he was a homo, he was a heterosexual, he went crazy. I did it with another guy, he didn't move. He was a homosexual, which I already knew that. But anyway, I couldn't believe Charles. And he, he just said it, of course they're fucking. And I knew that Steve had taken Edwin away from us, the family, me and the children. But I didn't know they were fucking. Uh, so, um, let's see, where am I going with this? Um, that's what Charles said. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. When you, um, you know, fuck somebody in the butt, this, the penis gets a little shit in the tip of it. Right? So, the call a penis shit tipped. Now, Michael Bublé put out a perfume called, um, what is it called? Po Homie. <laughs> po Homie. Of course, in French, or whatever language it is, it's pronounced differently, but, you know. So he put that out, the perfume out. And I'm thinking, well, he put the perfume out to get rid of the shit smell. And also, if it wasn't that, I went, this white girl, I was walking down the street, this white girl grabs me um, near the homeless walking center Oliveri's, right, in St. Francis. So she drags me. So, I mean, I go with her. She doesn't really drag me, but she kind of pulls me in and says, come, I got to show you this. So I went with her, and it was a room full of Muslims, and they took their shoes off, and their feet stank. And so I think, well, maybe Buble did a perfume for the Muslim stink, of stinky feet. You know, that's possible. Um, okay, let's see, where was I going? Um, oh, now my friend, who is actually my sister from another life, Mary Panama, believes that the whole man bond thing, they bond together and, you know, against women and they, you know, they get together and they don't want any women around. And it's because they're all butt-fucking. They're all fucking each other in the butt. And they don't tell. We don't know that because they don't tell that. They're good at keeping that as a secret. I'm not talking about the saints. They don't sleep with anybody physically. They they take about they ch ch you know they do chastity. They do um what's that word when you don't have sex? That they don't have sex when they become masters. Before they become masters, they have children and wives and everything. But once they become masters, they don't have physical sex anymore. So I'm not talking about them, but I'm talking about, um, you know, regular Western men. And also, this is kind of off the subject, but Charon Singh, who was Jesus Christ, said, Western, no, he said, yeah, Western women, that would be us in America and England, you know, the West, are, and Eastern men 
are the most devoted people in the world. Now look at these Eastern men. I'm going to show you devotion. Look at that. They're looking at Gurinder Singh, God. Look at that. Is that devotion? Can you imagine a Western man humbling themselves to be in awe of God like they are? You see that? Now you know Western women are more spiritual because those are the women who always go to church and their husbands won't go with them. And, you know, till he's 65 about to die. Okay, is there anything else I want to say? Uh, oh, I want to show you. I want you to check out these videos. This is by my son from another line, Mark Dice. He's got guts. He used to go on the street and uh, talk to people, about, ask them questions, and they would show their stupidity, you know. And it was just amazing. You couldn't believe it. I was so stupid. Okay, uh, so this is the video. Bill Maher admits what Democrats, I can't see that, what does that say, really want. Okay, De check out that video on Mark Das YouTube channel. He's got a million subscribers. Number two, Kathy Griffin is mad at me. That's the name of uh, Mark's uh, other video. And uh, that's interesting, too. Okay, so let's see. Where am I going to go now? There's so much one could talk about. Um, wow, this is odd for me to get a lot. Um, I didn't realize. Uh, what's this? The snake. Oh, Tommy Robinson. I told you. Let's get him out of jail, okay? He was my husband. I was Sarah. He was Abraham. And he doesn't deserve to be in jail. He's just trying to save the West from the dinosaurs. The snake, black, snake, floozy. When the snake, the black Muslim, Daya or Dia or whatever her name is, Ali, or some name like that, it snuck into my house. Jeannie Song, my teenage friend, um, whose American, Italian grandmother, Mrs. Negrin, was the last white person to move from the Hollis Queen neighborhood when the colored middle, middle class moved in, was my children, singing Robin's surrogate grandmother, Mrs. Negrin was. Jeannie Song told me that while I was in California, with the children watching, I mean, keeping Edwin, my husband, the husband, uh, keeping his widow mother uh, company because her husband died fucking a church secretary, big time Reverend Sidney Birdsong, friends of the mayor, Tom Bradley. That happened, okay? So I'm in California taking care of Edwin's mother. And he's in New York having this black Muslim floozy in my house, in my bed, fucking and getting her pregnant. How is that for adding salt to the wound? And then when I found the piece of paper with the baby, with the baby's um, birth certificate, when I came back to New York, he says, well, uh, and I said, well, she has to go. I don't even believe I said that. <laughs> I, you know, already I have forgiven him. He didn't even ask for forgiveness. And so he says, no, she gonna, you're going to manage me. And so I said, she's going to manage you. Oh, I know the other point about Steve and Edwin butt-fucking. I don't know that they butt-fucked. I do know that Edwin told me he was a chameleon. And the chameleon is the one, the lizard, that changes his um himself to fit in with the environment so even if he's a homo a heterosexual if steve wanted to buttfuck oh we're doing buttfucking this week then that's what a chameleon would do so i have come to not doubt that any longer 
because that would explain that would explain everything. It wasn't just that Steve wanted to keep Edwin close to him, so he knew when he come up with more product, because he was a he was a competitor. They were probably lovers. I think Charles was right. So uh, I'm telling you about this other thing about Edwin. Let's see. So later, after I returned from having visited my mom. Okay, that I really said that. I came back from Tennessee and I saw that. Um, that somebody had been sleeping in my bed. Uh, you know. okay. and let's see, where was I going with that? Some of this I was going to put in a book. Okay, so. Princess Diana. Oh, what did I say about Princess Diana? So Edwin drew, I'm talking about in 1970, he was drawing a small salary from pocket full of tunes. This is before the album, What It Is, came out, before the black Muslim groupie he grabbed hold of him thinking he was going to be rich, you know, all that. Published after I set him up and got him in a way to make money. And then I know lots of women who help their husbands through medical school, they become doctors, then the doctors marry the nurses or they leave the women. And so this is not new, this goes on. But it still um, blows your mind when you trust a guy. And you think he's different, you know. So um, Edwin was drawing a salary from pocket full of Tunes Publishing Company, founded by Wes Farrell. Now this was set up by Johanna Bogota who was married to me in a previous life, who I sold Stevie Wonder to. And then when I sold Stevie Wonder to him by praising him and saying, yes, he's a genius, of course he can cross over from uh, soul singer to superstar. And then so we go to believe me because we had, you know, been married. He had trusted me. Although all this was unconscious, he didn't remember he was married to me and I didn't remember he was my husband either. But we just had this understanding between us and the vibration of, you know, the, the love was still there. So, Vagoda made Steve a superstar, okay? And Vagoda got Birdsong, this deal, with Pocket Full of Tunes, Wes Farrell, because Vagoda was a genius uh, lawyer, negotiator, you know? So that's what he did, was made deals to make these guys... Well, it makes Steve super rich. He got a hundred million dollars, and Edwin has a comfortable living. You know, um, a house, car, fancy car, you know, all that. So he's got money. So anyway, so he, so pocket full of tunes. Company was founded by Wes Farrell, whose second wife was Tina Turner. No, <laughs> Tina Sinatra. Donna Frank Sinatra, whose hits include I Did It My Way, by Paul Anka, who was a Canadian singer, whose hit included Put Your Head on My Shoulder, and Diana. Now, Princess Diana did it her way. So did her boyfriend, Arab Dodi Fayed. His father owns Harrods. Harris is a luxury department store located in Brompton Road in Knightsbridge, London. It is now owned by Qatar, is that how you say that? In the Middle East, Arabs, Muslims. Okay, so what did I put? Something, Q at Adam, at Adam, her. Oh, I see why I did that. Q at A for Adam, R for her. That's the message there. Q, Adam, cross, Adam, her, conflict. Masculine and feminine in one body. In the garden. Garden. Okay. Um, what is that? Divin, divin quality? Yeah. E quality. Okay, I Z. C I Z Abel Isabel. 
Michelle is my belle, yeah. Abel, de Abel, Abel, that was a, a son after Cain in the garden. Abel didn't want to sit and eat with the family at the table in the beginning of the world. He wanted to sit on his mama's, Mama Eve's lap and what? I suck our teeth. I don't know where I put that. Like this. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh. See? Abel was a big baby. I mean, he was big. But he didn't want, like this kid. He didn't want to stop breastfeeding. And Eve was a mother who, um, just wanted to please. She wanted a happy family. She wanted to please her family. She let them do anything they wanted to her. That's pretty much the way I was, you know, as Michelle Bird thought, you know. So, so then Cain, her oldest son in the garden, didn't like that at all to see his mother because her nipples were, you know, bleeding and cracked. And, and she was in pain. And she told, he told Abel, stop it. Sit at the table and eat. You've got teeth for crying out loud. And he told Adam, stop him. He's hurting our mother. So nobody stopped him. But Cain had as much as he could take. And he pulled Abel from the table. And they fell to the ground. And Abel cut his head and bled to death. So, so that's how that happened. Cain did not mean to hurt his, son, to his brother. They have it like he did it on purpose because he was jealous of... He wasn't jealous. He was trying to protect his mother. As a matter of fact, he set the pattern for men wanting to protect the female women. Okay, he started that pattern. And I started the pattern of being a martyr, of being a moth, or, you know, the moth is the insect that is attracted to the flame, knowing the flame is going to burn it up, okay, so the mother does anything for the children, you know, even her husband, she'll just do anything for them to make them okay, and, um, that's, God doesn't like that. He wants Eve to um, realize her own value because they didn't understand a mother's love because Eve had no mother. There was no pattern. I think I said this on another video. I don't want to say the same things over and over. But, see, but that's how that happened. So what's going on is the Garden of Eden has been repeated over and over and replayed. Every family is doing that whole Eve, Adam, Abel, Cain thing. And, you know, and the point is to wake Eve up. To, she's not asleep, but I think they want to change her nature and make her tougher. I know they want to change. Even Jordan Peterson said, Women are agreeable, but when they're negotiating, they shouldn't be agreeable, you know. So, you see, everybody's trying to say, Eve, you know, stand up for yourself. Eve, stop being a sucker, you know. Uh, so, I was a sucker. Like I said, Charles tried to tell me what was going on between Edward and Steve. I couldn't believe it. I could, no part of me could believe it. Even after I found out Edwin had been sleeping in my bed while I was in California taking care of his mother, I was going to forgive him. Even after I found out he had a baby, a secret baby, like Steve did the same thing, had a secret baby, like Gary Bird did the same thing, had a secret baby while married, like Jesse Jackson did, what is it, a black thing? No morality there? So, uh... What else?
Okay, look at this. This is interesting. You see the word words? You put the S at the beginning, it's swords. That's why they say there's a war of words. Because they're using swords. <clears throat> there's a war of swords. Okay, what is that? Stevie Wonder ordered her to order divine source for himself. Right. Yeah, that's how he said. You see, he put the order in. That's another thing. Doing all this research, I'm finding that everything that's going on in the culture is somebody's order. It's written. It is written. So I'm putting in, you know, per the uh, instructions of God, orders for um, good people. You know, because those are sneaky orders for bad people. Okay. Let's, all right, what is this? Okay, it's, the thing's going to stop recording anyway, so. I think I've told you enough goodies for now. Yeah, because any other stories I start to tell, is the, the machine is going to cut me off mid-sentence. Oh, oh, I know. Let me just finish. The last video I was making, I said that Michael Bublé, who is Adam, I showed this picture, right, this Adam, uh, put out the um, perfume recently, this is new, to cover the stinks in Eve's environment in her life, the stinkiness, and I forgot to name it. I didn't forget. The machine cut off before I named it. It's called, I think I named it already, Po Homie. <laughs> po Homie. Now, does that, is that, you know, in keeping with Michael Bublé, you know, he's, you know, he's just so obvious, you know, and I like it. I'm glad, you know, he's very bold about trying to connect with Eve, you know. So I'm glad, because I'm bold about connecting with him. I just come out and name him. You know, he doesn't know my name. He's got a song. I just haven't met you yet. True. Michelle Bird's song, Mild Threat song, Bird saying, Thank you for listening. Get Tommy Robinson free, the father of religion. If you're a Christian or Judaism or Islam, he's the father of those religions. So we owe him. And of course, he's trying to, he's trying to um, tame Islam, and not let them kill us all. <laughs> it's a good idea, Tommy. All right, talk to you later.